first of all, the 30 for 30s we know are awesome. Yep. Now they've turned the 30 for 30s into uh, into podcasts, an audio version of it. And the very first one is Dan and Dave uh, Revisited. And this is the story of Dan O'Brien and Dave Johnson. I listened to it this morning as I was coming in. And it's, it's so compelling uh, about, obviously, the Reebok campaign and the 92 Olympics and the story leading up to it and how sports marketing, really, back then it was just – it was still fledgling. Obviously, you had Jordan. But it just – it's not what it is today. No, like, what not it is at all. Today not is at it. all. So this is really the early stages of it. But this was one of them that it just – everybody – it. It made you pay attention to something that you probably didn't pay much attention to, and probably uh, for the first time since the Wheaties box and, and Bruce Jenner. And Dan and Dave join us right now uh, to talk about this podcast. And I really, you know, there's so many places I want to begin with, but I think the first thing I have to ask you is I work with two athletes. DiPietro is a goalie uh, in the NHL, and, and Canty's a Super Bowl champion uh, with the Giants. And, and these guys talk about how great athletes they were. But you guys have to admit, if you, if you win a decathlon, Nobody else can claim to be a, 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 the best athlete in the world uh, other than a, a decathlete because you're basically the best at running, jumping, and throwing. And what else is there in ath- athletics? Well, really not much. Yeah, we're look, Dave and I are looking at each other like, who wants to answer that? Yeah. You know, we, we owe that all I was to hoping for a lot more enthusiasm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah obviously, we're the best <laughs> athletes. Well, we owe that to Jim Thorpe from the 1912 Olympics, and he was the godfather of it all. But when you look through history in the decathlon, especially in the United States, Rayford Johnson, Milt Campbell, Bill Toomey, and, of course, uh, of course, Bruce Jenner. And this is an event that the U.S. has had a stranglehold. But, no, when we were competing athletes, I, I think Dave and I both took a lot of pride in the fact that we just weren't weren't good track and field athletes, but we could do some other things very well. Dave is an outstanding golfer. I played golf, I think bowling, tennis, and different things like that. And I think the two greatest titles in the world, one of the three greatest titles, fastest man in the world, uh, and then and then you got the heavyweight champion in the world, and then the world's greatest athlete. Yeah, and I ended up going against some of the other athletes at the Jeep Superstars as well. Herschel Walker was there, Andre Reed, you know, a couple of really good athletes were there. And, uh, and I could just tell with all those variety of events, you, I mean, you'd row a canoe, you'd ride a jet ski, you'd hit a golf shot. I mean, all this stuff, I, my body just naturally took it on, and I ended up winning the thing twice. So it's, uh, it's interesting to think if, if Dan and I would have went into football or another sport, who knows? Who knows what we could have done? Now, Dan and Dave, I remember the ad campaign, and I remember the hype surrounding the 92 Olympics. Everybody was excited about the Dream Team, but also with you guys in the Reebok ad campaign, I want to know, was the ad campaign a distraction in any way from you guys achieving your ultimate goal, which was being able to hold Olympic gold? Well, it certainly it certainly was a, a bit of a, a, it, a bit of a distraction. It was something that we had to manage all year long. It was fun and it took us out of our comfort zone and we got to do things. We got to see what it was like to be a real, you know, a, a real superstar as a as a as an athlete in this country. Um, but as we got close to the trials, I think we were able to kind of, you know, m- minimize our focus just to just to the athletic competition itself. But there, I, I said earlier that there were constant reminders that you could never get out of the fact that this thing was looming. And what was so fun about it is it was real. 